today we are going to be making cranberry breakfast Christmas muffins. My name is Claire and I'm going to be walking you through how to make these delicious delicious mush, uh, muff, muffins. <laughs> Let me put my teeth in. Okay, to start you need your first jug. Okay, and we're going to add the flour, bicarbonate of soda and baking powder mix. So if you carefully open your bag into your bowl or jug and tip all the ingredients into your bowl. There we go, they're all in. That first lot's gone in. Excellent. Your second pack has got caster sugar. It's got ground nutmeg and ground cinnamon. The ground means it's powdered and not whole. So if you pop your nose in there, it will smell like Christmas, which is the nutmeg and the cinnamon. If you could just keep yourself a little spoonful out to one side, just for sprinkling on top of your muffins before they go into the oven. So you can tip the whole of that bag in or bar a spoonful. And they're in. So if you keep your surface nice and clear and pop your rubbish away as best you can as you go along, it aids the whole cooking experience. So just with your whisk or your fork, just give that a little mix around so those two are nicely combined and there'll be a slightly off white colour, which is what you want. Okay, they're all in there, fantastic. Now then, with your second bowl or jug, I want you to add the tub of vegetable oil and then into that, add the tub of milk. So you've got there, uh, 75 millilitres of vegetable oil and 125 mils of milk in there. So into your second bowl that goes. Wonderful, that's it. If you've got a spatula, you can get every last little bit of um, oil and milk out of your tub using your spatula. If not, you can use your flat knife. Wonderful. Okay, just wait for everybody to catch up. We're all good. That's it. So you can use your jug to measure, or if you have measuring cups, they're another good way to measure in the ingredients. Can everyone do a thumbs up if they're okay? We've just made waiting on Claire. No panic. Catherine, no pressure. you okay? Thumbs up. Are you okay, Catherine? Hi, Catherine. Are you there? Are you okay? Put your thumbs up if you're ready. <laughs> That's it. I don't want to go too fast. Wonderful. Those two ingredients mixed. When you're ready, you need to crack your egg on the side and let the whole of the egg fall into this um, milk and vegetable mix <clears throat> and just leave your eggshell to the side until you can pop it in the bin. Now, don't worry if you get some eggshell into your mix because we can cook that out. So the whole of that egg should have just fallen straight in. Okay, brilliant. If any of you have got any eggshell that you can see, if you use your broken eggshell to go inside your mix, the sharpness of the egg cuts through the oil and the milk and lets you retrieve your piece of eggshell. Once you've done that and we're waiting for everybody to catch up, just give those three ingredients a good mix around. That's it. If you're in a bowl, just go nice and careful. It doesn't spill over the edge. And if you're in a jug, you've got a bit more depth. So you can give it a good mix around like that. Okay, 
Okay. Does it sound that's all good? Thumbs up if you're ready and you're all caught up. Fabulous, fabulous. Catherine, are we all good with you? I'm getting confused. You're getting confused. What are you up to? I'm starting none of it. Okay. Oh, have you got your ingredients there? Yeah. Okay. Did you pop them in the bowl? Pop your dry ingredients in bowl one? What, the um, soda? Yeah, if you put one of them, bag is named flour, bicarbonate of soda and baking powder mix, and then you've got the sugar mix. If those two go in the jar together, on your bowl together, all of it. Give me a thumbs up, yeah, both the bags. Let me know when you've done those. Give me a thumbs up. If everybody else, while you're waiting, if you get your satsumas and use your small side of your grater, push down hard so it just takes the edge of the skin off. Now, this is called zesting. Now, please bear in mind that a grater is no different to a sharp knife. So watch your fingers when you're doing it. You don't want any finger now in there. That won't be a Christmas treat for anybody. So you don't go through to the white bit. You just want to take the orange bit off. So just give a bit of pressure against the grater and push down. And you'll get all little tiny flakes of orange. And that is called the zest of your fruit. Are you okay, Catherine? You poured those two in? So if everybody else does both the satsumas, Don't worry if you go through the skin a bit like me. It's just where they're soft. That's no problem. Okay, Catherine, what are you up to? If you put your oil and milk and your egg in a separate bowl... Everybody's good with their zesting. Excellent. Once you've done that, you need to try carefully to scrape and bash all of the orange zest into your dry ingredients. A little tip here is with your non sharp knife, inside of your pizza, it's probably all stuck to the inside, but it's uh, wet. And that just helps you take all the zest out of your grater. Or give it a good bash like that. Catherine, if, you can... if you're really confused, I've just text you all the methods that they're using. So if it's that your laptop keeps freezing, I've just sent you a text that's got everything on it that they're doing stage by stage, okay? <laughs> Do you need to yeah. read that? Sorry, Claire, you can carry on now. Okay, it's okay. So, Kath is Catherine caught up? So, Catherine, don't worry about what we're doing here. Have you done your... So, this is for Catherine. Have you done your oil, egg and milk in a separate jug? The um, two no. other tins you've got there, two plastic tubs. One's got milk, one's got vegetable oil. Mix yeah. those into one and add one egg to it, Catherine. Okay, so look at the colour of the You should have little specks in there. This is called zesting, and that's how easy the zesting is. So, if you are just need to break your orange or satsuma in half. So, you've got four halves of satsumas. Just check there's no obvious pips at the top. 
if there isn't, use bare hands or a fork. You can pop the fork in the orange and twist it, and that acts as a juicer. So as you twist the fork, all the juice will come out. So that can go in the same bowl as your dry ingredients and your orange zest. Or if you haven't got a fork to hand, you can just use your hands. Don't worry if you get big chunks of orange going. That really doesn't matter. If they're really big, you can just pick them out with your fingers and squeeze them a little bit more to get the juice out. So, Catherine, have you mixed your flour? Uh, sorry, have you mixed your oil and egg and milk together? No, not yet. Okay, do you want to do that then? So you've got the oil, the milk, those all in one jug, and then a nice mix around for those. You probably need to wash your hands off this. You can tea towel to hand and give your hands a wipe. Guys, if you've got any sores or cuts on your hands because the orange juice might make you jump out your skin if it catches your cut. Catherine, are you there? So mix, uh, Catherine, mix the juice out of your orange. And do I peel it first? No, 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 keep that. Just cut them in half and squeeze all the orange juice into your dry mix. In that screen, does that go with the flour as well? What is that one? What does that say on the bag? What does that say on the bag, Catherine? I can't quite see. Can you tell me what it is? Is that the sugar? Yeah, put that in with the flour. Unless it's the rice, then don't put it in. The rice will be in one of these. So she should be all right with that one. That must be a bag of um, sugar. So everybody else, what you want to do is you've zested and juiced into the dry mix. You can now add the other jug of wet ingredients, which is your milk, oil, and egg. Pour in. And now the hard work starts. Because you've got to, carefully as you can, especially if you're in a shallow bowl, mix all them ingredients round. Now, it will go lumpy, and it might look a little yucky. That's perfectly normal. Just keep mixing until we've got a nice, smooth batter. The only lumps we want is to see is any little orange bits, which are the zest from our orange. So you've really got to work your muscles up now. So making sure every now and again you go to the really at the bottom um, to get in the corners and round the side. It's the flat mix that is caught up. So you can look at the bottom of your jug, check there's no bits in there, and then keep mixing. So how's that going, Catherine? Have we got the two jugs ready to mix them together? So traditionally, satsumas, nutmeg and cinnamon and the cranberries are quite staple ingredients we're used to cooking around Christmas time. So everybody okay with that? Probably can't talk, so we might be a bit out of breath with all that mixing. Really go around the sides. So if you have a spatula, wooden or plastic, if you get the flat side and go all around the edge of your bowl or jug, because that will get any little stray ingredients off the sides and back into your mixture. You might get a little bundle of flour at the bottom sometimes when you're mixing the two ingredients together. So 
So, Catherine, have you yeah. squeezed the oranges? Have you squeezed the oranges? You got your satsumas. I think she keeps freezing, doesn't she? You got your satsumas, Catherine. If you cut them in half and squeeze all the juice into your ingredients. Uh, no, they're the cranberries. We don't need those just yet. So you should have a nice runny batter. Hopefully everybody's just looking like that. Yeah, I've done it on you. And all your orange juice has gone in. So if you're, that's lovely. That's looking brilliant, Russell. Charlie, that looks fabulous. Yes. Claire, that looks lovely. Adam, can I have a little look at yours? If Have you put all your orange juice in? So Adam, you might need to add some orange juice. Squeeze all of the four halves that you had. Squeeze all the juice in. That's it. Use them muscles. Fabulous. And then just make sure, just check at the bottom of your bowl or your jug that you've got nine packets of flour mix. We want it all mixed in. One last whisk. Fantastic. Thank you, Claire. Wonderful. That's it. And you just put the last bits in, and then that'll give the cake mix a little bit more fluid, which will make it a nice batter. That's all good. So, if you want to get your um, muffin tray prepared, so if you have it in front of you, and you'll see the little pot of rice that I've given you. So as I said before, you just need a few little sprinkles of rice in each muffin tray. So these aren't going to be mixing with our cake because our muffin cases are going to go on top of these because you really wouldn't want any rice in our cake mix, that's for sure. So just divide that up, that goes plenty between all of them. And then as I've said before, what this does, as your cake, it stops the bottom of the cake going all soggy. So this soaks up all the moisture that we don't want. So once you've covered all 12 uh, muffin case, muffin holes with the rice, you can then put your muffin cases to sit on top of the flour. So the flour isn't in our cake at all. So this mix will give you 12 muffins. However, if you overfill some of the cases, you might get 10 or you might get uh, 11. It depends how they go, but generally it's about 12. Plenty to share with your family. Okay, so Catherine, are you all good? You've mixed all the ingredients together, so we've all caught up. I haven't forgotten about the cranberries. I'm going to show you a little trick to make sure that they're evenly distributed between each muffin. So have them to hand. Big, lovely, juicy cranberries. So you have got a lot of cranberries, so if you think you're not over keen on them, you don't have to add them all. You can add just a sprinkle to each. But if you're if you're a fan and you want to follow the recipe, then you can add them all. So has by shove of a big thumbs up, is everybody's muffin case is all prepared? Thumbs up, thumbs up. Well, that's a brilliant thumbs up. Thank you. Yeah, Adam, are you still there? I can't really see. Yeah, I can see it there. Russell, was you good? Is your muffin case ready? So if you have a jug that you've mixed yours in, that's the best thing to use. 
So you need to take your whisk out and pop it somewhere. You're probably going to be in a bit messy state at this stage. If you have your spatula or your knife, whichever one you've got, just to help guide out the mixture into the muffin cases. So we are only filling these halfway up. Don't panic if you go over. It just means you're slightly less muffins, but they will be bigger. So nice and carefully, nice and carefully. don't rush this box. You don't want to lose all that mixture to the work surface. You're just going to pour, and come here to see, half fill the case. It's do rise up quite a lot. So you're using your spatula and your knife just to catch the drips from the edge of your jug. If you do have a bowl, then you can still do it. Just go careful it will come up in one come out in one go so if you put a little bit in each and then we can always go round and top up each muffin case once you've done the 12. nice and slow and steady on this one Just using your spatula and your knife just to catch the drips at the end while you move on to the next muffin case. Okay, so not that you need to rush, but I've finished mine and I've still got some mixture left. So I'm going to go back over ones that look a little bit empty and I'm going to fill them up a bit. No need for you to panic. Go nice and steady on this job. You'll see all little the bits of the orange orange zest, orange orange zest coming out. That's what we want. The colour of your mixture should be a bit of a light brown colour, and that's the cinnamon and the nutmeg that we've added. So this is where spatulas are good. You just get the last scrapes out of your jug okay wonderful Oh, this is lovely. It's very therapeutic to watch. Are you all OK? Are you all at the right stage? Catherine, have you put your muffin um, cases in your tin or on your baking tray or whatever you have? Make sure everything's mixed together and that everything's got like sort of a bit of a runny consistency. If it's not runny enough, maybe squeeze a little bit more of the satsuma, which is the thing that looks like the small orange juice in it. Sorry, Claire, I'm just basically taking over. I can't quite see her work session to see what she's up to. Okay, if anything is done, if you want to sprinkle maybe six or seven cranberries on top of each muffin mixture okay as I said before you do have a lot of cranberries so you don't have to use them all if you think dried cranberries are a little bit like raisins or sultanas but they have a slightly sweeter taste 
And of course, cranberries are quite traditional fruit to use at Christmas time. And they go very soft and juicy once they start cooking. So I'd say five or six cases should be plenty. As these cook, they will sink into the mixture and a couple might pop up on the top and go all crispy. You have to try one before they go in. These are perfectly safe for you to try. Like you can be cross contaminated with anything else. That's it. And definitely that. Well done, young man. You put all the hard work in. <laughs> Wonderful. How are we doing, everybody? Just making sure everyone's okay. Cases are on the trays. Mixtures all mixed. Don't worry about putting the cranberries in it. They're going at the end. That's lovely. Thank you. Well done. If you manage to keep hold of a little bit of sugar that I said when we left, just in your fingertips, if you sprinkle some of that sugar mix, which is caster sugar, nutmeg and cinnamon, you sprinkle that on top of a nice golden glow. Everybody all right? A nice guided golden glow with a crispy top where the sugar caramelises. Don't worry if you didn't manage to keep some behind or you haven't got any to hand. It's only really just a little extra. I just sprinkle some over them cranberries. It is nearly Christmas after all. A little bit of extra sugar. Wonderful. They look lovely. You okay, Adam? Spooning yours in, lovely. Russell, Kathleen, how are you doing? Are you mixed together? Do you need any? Have you got any questions, Catherine? Okay. <laughs> he's doing a grand job, Claire. And he's eating fruit at the same time. That's fantastic. He's wonderful. He washed his hands and he's eating fruit. <laughs> Double thumbs up. <laughs> Charlie, you okay? You up? You caught up? They're looking good. Fantastic. Adam, you're still spooning in. Going steady, wins the race. That's what I say. If you've got some sugar left, sprinkle some over the top for a golden glove. Going to come back up, finish that bit. Got there, yes, they're looking. Russell, how are you doing? Can't quite see your cakes. If you've if you've caught up, you're good, right? Marvelous. So these need twenty minutes in your oven. Okay, I had to after twenty minutes. If you have a cocktail stick, if you haven't got a cake tester, you pop it straight down the middle of your cakes after 20 minutes. If it comes out with a little bit of cake mixture on the end of the stick, you need to pop them back in the oven for five minutes. So the cooking time is 20 to 25 minutes. So check after 20 minutes with your cocktail stick. If it comes out completely clear, 
they're cooked you don't need to put them back in the oven it's only if they come out and they're a bit gooey at the stage you cooked these you don't have to keep them you can actually freeze these cakes and then when you're ready to eat them um, over the Christmas period, you can take two or three out of the freezer, however many you're feeding in your house, pop them back in the oven for 10 minutes. When you reheat something like a cake, it reignites all those flavors we've just added. Your kitchen will smell like Christmas and they'll be lovely and warm, which is just how you want a muffin as it comes out of the oven. So you can make these and cook these today and then you can freeze them. So when yours do come out the oven, something like this. Okay, it's a, a nice dry bright base to my cake because we used the rice. You'll notice that you might have a cranberry that's gone a bit crispy. Burnt. that's perfectly fine that's just where that one sat on the top so you'll have some juicy ones in the middle and some slightly crispy ones on top okay so at the stage, as i said you can freeze the muffins another time 12 at the same time Ah, that's it. Perfect. <laughs> 